I still think Mark Cameron is one of the best series contributors to the Ryan verse, and even though I enjoyed this book, it just wasn't quite his best. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel, you're with Chris and today I'll be giving my spoiler free review of Command and Control written by Mark Cameron, published only a couple of weeks ago. This is the 37th book in the Ryanverse, my favourite thriller series of all time. I absolutely love it and even though I enjoyed the book for the most part, I do have a couple of negatives about it that I'll share with you shortly but let's start with how I always like to with what the book is about. President Jack Ryan travels to Colombia to support the country's president who is facing challenges from an autocratic force. What seems like an ordinary opportunity to preach the values of democracy quickly turns into a nightmare when a full-blown military coup erupts. President Ryan and his Secret Service team are cut off and out of contact. In Washington, meanwhile, the Vice President is in the middle of coordinating a military response, but there still remains an obstacle in the way. One of the main forces behind the coup is the ruthless criminal organisation known as the Camarilla. They have had their tentacles deep inside the plot to overthrow the government, but they now have an unexpected opportunity. They can't resist the chance to kill President Jack Ryan. So a fascinating premise, and I really like how um, the uh, chief... PPD agent um, or presidential protection detail agent Gary Montgomery has a gut instinct. He uh, has a really good instinct for things and he is against Ryan travelling down to Panama to meet with the president because he, uh, he knows the world. He uh, has a very good knowledge of uh, certain hotspots across the globe and he just doesn't think it's a good idea because he has a bad feeling about it. And when Ryan tries to uh, reassure him when they're on the way, um, Montgomery says to himself, look, there's always a leak, something will happen, and unfortunately something does. So uh, I thought that was a really good foreshadowing of what was to come, and uh, yeah, it's, he's uh, an impressive character, Montgomery, as the head of the uh, presidential protection detail. Now the things I enjoyed about the book, I think Mark Cameron has a very winning formula when it comes to his writing because he doesn't rush the beginnings, okay? He sets everything up uh, properly and then things build to uh, things build uh, momentum as the book goes on and by the time you get to the final third of the book things just ramp up and you have to strap yourself in because it is a thrill ride and uh, quite often when I've uh, read his books in the past I, I tend to read the first two thirds fairly moderately and then I always finish the, the last third of the book in one single sitting because it is so intense and uh, the stakes get raised really high so he's got a real knack for that particular formula and when you're reading a book a newcomer to the series who might read this one might think oh this is a slow burn but uh, because I've read a few of Mark Cameron um, contributions to the Ryan verse now I know what his style's like so uh, I'm happy with that and uh, I trust him to deliver the goods by the end of the book now this is a Jack Ryan senior novel so it's not a Jack Ryan junior novel by any means in this book Jack Ryan junior takes a real back seat you hardly hear from him he doesn't have much um, page time and I think that's a good decision because obviously um, Jack Ryan junior in the last book went through the ringer so he's having a bit of a rest um, in this one because it's made some room to develop new characters and to set up the uh, and to focus a little bit more on President Ryan and his relationship with Kathy as well and I really like the two new characters that Mark Cameron has introduced now the first one we have is Cobb who she's a, an FBI graduate who has been hand-picked by John Clark himself because he sees something in her um, that he believes uh, will make her into a uh, pretty good campus operator and the second character uh, finally is Chili. He's an ex-Texas SWAT officer slash sniper um, who rescued the First Lady five books ago in Chain of Command. So I've been waiting a little while because at the end of that book he was rec recruited by uh, John Clark and Ding Chavez and for four books we didn't hear anything. And I thought, where is this guy? I thought she recruited this new character. So my question was answered with this book at the beginning where Chili is officially uh, drafted in 
to the campus as an operator, which is really, really cool. So uh, I think introducing new blood into the series is a very good decision. It keeps things fresh and you get to invest yourself in new characters, which uh, both of these characters were really good. Uh, they did uh, prove themselves um, throughout the book as being potential good operatives for the campus because they do uh, have an altercation with a couple of unsavory types and they uh, hold themselves well. So uh, it was good to see a bit of action there and for the new characters to make a splash into the series, which is really, really good. So really looking forward to um, seeing how these two characters develop. Now, because there was uh, there needed to be room to develop these characters, uh, absent from this book, are uh, um, Carrie and Jad, the two snipers that have been featured in the last few books who are sort of on the way into the campus, that they're sort of um, contracted out to the campus. They haven't been made fully fledged members yet, but uh, hopefully they will be as the books go on. So uh, I think it's uh, really good to see new characters introduced, especially for new readers as well. Now, I can't remember a time in the Ryanverse where a recurring um, uh, enemy arose and uh, this is the second time that Camarillo have appeared uh, in the books because uh, they were the group responsible for kidnapping uh, Kathy Ryan the first lady and she's still reeling from that experience in this book as well and uh, they're just absolutely ruthless they're headed up by this sadi uh, sadistic woman called uh, Sabine Goshkova who uh, with her murdering uncle operating in the background pulling some strings she is a force to be reckoned with and she's actually really really frightening um, as a villain and she was responsible for a lot of attention throughout the book um, she is a real nasty piece of work and uh, she needs to be stopped now I'm going to touch upon the Foley's um, talking here about Mary Pat Foley the director of national intelligence who um, is a CIA legend. She has earned her position. She was appointed the position by Jack Ryan himself because they go way back. Um, Mary Pat Foley is um, renowned for being a, uh, a really effective um, field officer uh, behind the Iron Curtain in the days uh, in Moscow and uh, she was responsible for running assets and things like that and uh, various spy activities or clandestine activities and her, along with her husband Ed who used to be the chief of station in Moscow um, they get um, a little bit of page time here and Mary Pat Foley ends up going with Ryan down to Panama and it was nice to see her get out of the office for a change and actually hold a gun which is uh, really really cool and I really like like the small um, plot line of Ed Foley who's retired and he is still in Washington while Mary Pat is down in Panama and uh, even though he's retired and he's a lot older he's still a CIA officer at heart because when uh, a certain situation occurs it just proves that he can handle himself even though he is getting on in his years and that was really good to read about so it was a really nice uh, little subplot that featured Ed Foley which uh, I hadn't read about him in a long time but it was really good to read about them. Now let's look at some negatives here. Now I love Mark Cameron's work don't get me wrong he is fantastic I just felt with this one the ending was a little bit rushed and things were tied up a little bit too quickly because you know I think in about five pages the whole thing was over and it reached a fever pitch of action and then just had a couple of um, paragraphs and pages about what happened next and um, not much more was mentioned there so I thought the ending could have been extended a little bit more I would have liked to have seen a final scene between Jack and Kathy um, how they reconcile after uh, the tension between them because uh, she didn't want Jack to go down to Panama for this very reason and look what happened so I uh, would have liked to have seen that I would have liked to have um, seen a different uh, climax in the arc that featured Mary Pat Foley and uh, the villains of the uh, the book. What happened was the campus operators uh, were called down to Panama and uh, they were staying in a hotel uh, one country over and uh, Mary Pat needed their help and they were on their way and Adam Yao, a CIA officer who was running an operation down there uh, for the CIA got there first and uh, yeah, I won't say what happens because I don't do spoilers here but uh, I felt that the campus operators were on their way in a couple of planes to help out 
and it was resolved pretty quickly. And what did they do? They had to turn around and go home. Um, they didn't really get to do much. And I thought that was a little bit of a fault with the book because if uh, the plan was always to have someone um, come to Mary Pat's aid, why would you have the campus coming after, um, uh, coming along to assist? It just didn't make sense to me. So the characters had nothing to do uh, in the climax, and I thought that was a little bit of a fault. What I would have liked to have seen was um, a big fight at the end where uh, Sabine gets away, and then you have an epilogue, which has been done before in the series where, say, Domingo, Chavez, and John Clark might um, track her down uh, months later and put a bullet in her head or something like that but uh, you know that sort of thing has been done in the series before so I think that might have been a better way to go because it would have uh, tied up the ending a lot better uh, in my opinion but look overall the book was rather good and I did read through it pretty quickly but uh, it is sad that Mark Cameron has finished with the series now he's made such a mark on the series it's going to be hard for future authors to step into his shoes but having said that um, Andrews and Wilson are a duo of thriller writers who have their own series that uh, has been uh, very, very popular. They are doing the next book called Act of Defiance. I don't know what the plot is about, but uh, it's going to be interesting to see what their take on it will be. And I think, don't quote me, I think Kyle Mills is attached to do one maybe but uh, we'll see how that goes because Kyle Mills is um, contributing to the Mitch rap books uh, as well so yeah it's all exciting uh, there's going to be a raft of new writers uh, contributing to the series and it's going to be very interesting to see how uh, the book goes but uh, time will tell but that is it for my spoiler free review of Command and Control thank you so much for watching please don't forget to like and subscribe as always off offer up any feedback in the comments below and I will engage with you about that. If you have read the book, let's compare notes. Tell me what you think. But uh, yeah, until the next video, guys, happy reading.